I have been working hard on the ground for the past five years. Um, I've done many walkabouts, so I think many of the residents are actually very familiar with me. I've also rolled out several programs. The most recent one deals with uh, jobs and livelihoods. So I set up a jobs and legal clinic um, whereby the residents can write in if they have any issues with uh, legal contracts or employment related issues, as well as helping them in their local job search. We have a local placement agency, Project Success. So these are the initiatives that because of the existing COVID-19 situation that I'm still um, actively rolling out and encouraging residents uh, to look at. So these are actually some of the key messages I'm sp still speaking to the residents about. We have a very comprehensive blueprint for the development of uh, Pongo Town. So we have talked about the Pongo Town Hub and we've also talked about the Pongo Digital District. But this is actually the hard infrastructure part. There's actually a lot of uh, soft programming that is important as well. For instance, uh, when the infrastructure is up, we can have a lot of collaborative community activities that will actually be beneficial for young and old. So these are the things that we can actually interact with the community about, ask them for their inputs, and then roll out something that is suitable for them. For instance, we're already in active talks with uh, the Singapore Institute of Technology, which is going to be uh, an anchor tenant uh, in the Pongo Digital District. We're already talking to them about what kind of, for example, uh, sustainable kind of uh, initiatives we can roll out, especially because we have young people here. So even though Pongo West is an SMC, for it to have a larger scale impact, we actually have to work collaboratively as Pongo Town, because then you would not only reap economies of scale, it would actually have a wider outreach and wider impact as well. I think the very exciting and interesting thing is that when you have young residents, and also because we are a new town, people are just coming in, they're settling down, they're actually trying to find out many things and also trying to find out how they can make their lives here more meaningful, a happier one for their families. So there's actually a lot of opportunity for engagement. For instance, uh, in the past, I would say two, three years, I identified that there were certain cost of living issues that young residents were worried about, which include the cost of infant milk formula, uh, as well as the cost of preschool. So the way to engage with them is I, I, I used our online surveys, Google Forms, and I found out that, wow, within three days, you can have like 3,000 people fill out a form and they can let you know what their, their, their views are on the issue. Um, so that is one way whereby we can effectively reach out to a younger audience, which are, who are all very digital savvy. But at the same time, we have to complement that with uh, outreach, physical outreach, going door to door, uh, because only then, then you'll hear the stories uh, and give you that qualitative feedback on top of the quantitative feedback that they're providing via online surveys. There are two areas uh, I would like to look at closely. One of the things, uh, obviously, is because we have young families here, so cost of living and also children-related issues, I think, will continue to be an area of focus. I have spoken about um, infant milk formula previously. I've spoken about childcare uh, fees previously. Moving forward, I, our children actually will grow up, obviously, in Pongo West, and they would have other costs and other activities that they would like to participate in. So in the next five years, if I have the opportunity to continue serving in Pongo West, I would want to interact and engage residents to find out what type of activities and what kind of further support we can give to them as their children are growing up. Let me give you an example. We are looking now at building a community centre. But a community centre need not just be a building with classrooms to offer enrichment and tuition. There can be far more permutations of it. For example, we could have more outdoor play areas, we could encourage more team building, we could encourage a greater appreciation of nature, we could even, for example, look at cultivating um, interest in gardening and uh, growing edible greens, you know, or further and recycling efforts and so on and so forth. So, but these are things that I would have to engage with residents and find out more. Because at the end of the day, um, 
I don't think there is a one size fits all kind of a solution. And in a young town where there are young families, there is a lot of opportunity to find out what is it that they desire. What is it that they are looking out for for their children? What is it? What what are their aspirations? You know, and I think that I'm going to be spending quite a bit of effort on finding out and discovering the best channels to reach out to them to get their inputs on these matters. Sorry, I was a bit distracted. Can I, could you repeat your question? Firstly, as an M SMC, I, I guess I have a lot of uh, flexibility to decide on uh, the topics as well as the outreach channels. So I've been doing actually a lot of Facebook Live on uh, my day-to-day -day engagement with my residents. Uh, we all know that there's now safe distancing. So actually, when you use your mobile phone, right, there are only X number of people who can be in your frame at any one point in time. right? So I've been going around filming my interactions and these are all extremely candid. These are not um, prepared, planned for. And sometimes you'll realise that the sound quality is not very good. Because to be honest, when you're on the go and you're meeting people, and it's all candid, right? You're not exactly... You don't exactly have all your systems and sound management stuff with you. But I think what's important is that this is regular, everyday life. And when residents, and anyway, they are they're, they're familiar with me, so they're comfortable to speak on screen with me. Uh, but it is not a prepared form of a campaign, so to speak. So I think this is one of the key differences, in my opinion, between campaigning now and campaigning five years ago. Um, the use of digital media, um, but obviously each and every candidate would have different ways of using it. And I've chosen to use Facebook Live because I think that that's the most um, natural and something that my residents feel comfortable with. I think firstly, Pasir Ris Pongo GRC is a large GRC. It was a six-person GRC. And it was quite clear um, that there was a move towards more SMCs and smaller-sized GRCs. So it is not unexpected that Pasir Ris Pongo GRC would be uh, subdivided. The question, I guess, is how it would be subdivided. So for myself, when I found out that Pongo West SMC uh, uh, sorry, Pongo West becomes an SMC. I was, of course, at the start, it was kind of like, wow. <laughs> you know? And then the question then would be, what, what else do I need to do? So I think the first thing I, I looked at was that there were obviously some programs that we're doing as a GRC. I, uh, I would like to talk about Project Success, which is a job placement service that we have. We used to have it serving the entire Pasir Ris Pongo GRC. But now, us being a SMC, and on top of the fact that COVID-19 now has affected jobs and livelihoods, the first thing I thought about is how do I have this service localised here for my residents to give them that uh, ease and convenience and also to have a regular person service them. So this is like one of the ways whereby we may have had certain functions and services as a GRC, but now that I am, I am at SMC, I would like to provide something that is localised for my residents. This is just one example. There could be more in the future. I haven't been at SMC for very long. Uh, and if I'm successfully elected, I want to spend more time to find out from my residents what other localised services they would want that best meets their needs. No comment on that issue. I, I, I won't comment on that issue. Thank you. I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. <laughs> Thank you.
actually, I spoke about that just now on the online. Yeah, I'm sorry, I think. But maybe I'll just add one point on the, the elderly because I didn't cover that uh, earlier. Definitely during the circuit breaker period, when we advise the elderly to stay at home, there has to be a change in the way we outreach to residents. So one thing I tried doing was using WhatsApp. Not many elderly may be on Facebook, but actually those who are on smartphones, they still use WhatsApp regularly. And actually the elderly are actually very positive and you know, they want to be part of a larger community. So they actually do send regular WhatsApp messages to each other to encourage each other even amidst challenging conditions. So that was one way I reached out to the elderly when there were important messages about health and COVID-19 uh, related issues. Uh, I would just send out a short blurb to inform them. I also tried doing um, Facebook posts in Hokkien and also Chinese. Uh, I'm not too sure about the exact outreach, but that was um, something I tried doing. Uh, and uh, depending on how, uh, you know, depending on the feedback I get, that could also be another channel that I'll continue to use. One other thing I'd like to mention is that a lot of young people have been using Zoom to keep in contact with each other. So it was very interesting that recently uh, for Dumpling Festival, I actually tried something new with the elderly uh, in my community, which was to encourage them to get onto Zoom to celebrate Dumpling Festival. And uh, they actually did a yam sing collectively online via Zoom. And there were 70 uh, elderly residents who actually did it. So I thought it was quite a good start, you know. And I think we shouldn't say that elderly cannot use digital engagement. Um, now we have the Seniors Go Digital Program that has been launched by the IMDA. And I think that, you know, building on the momentum that we have now, I think we'll increasingly see more and more seniors getting online. And I think I could also use those means to engage the elderly residents. Are we all right? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, so you're tuning in live right now to the Straits Times. Who you just saw was Miss Sun Xue Ling. Um, she is PAP candidate. Miss Sun Xue Ling, of course, is PAP candidate for Pongo West SMC. It is one of the four new SMCs. Um, this SMC was carved out of Pasir Ris Pongo GRC. Um, as we know, as some of you might be familiar, Miss Sun, um, this is, will be. Uh, she has served one term as MP, and so she is contesting for a second term and um, this is of course her Pongo West Ward she's doing a walkabout we are at block 273D Pongo Place there's a Kopi Tem behind me um, she just answered some questions from the media and she's going to be meeting some residents now of course Miss Soon is going up against uh, the workers parties Miss Tan Chen Chen um, so maybe they might meet along the way let's follow her and we can see
很好呀，很好。谢谢你们，祝你们健康。So you're tuning in right now. You just saw Miss Sun Xue Ling, um, PAP candidate for Punggol West SMC. She is. She just spoke to some residents and um, what that lady who was sitting down at the Kopitiam was saying is that, you know, she, because um, this Miss Sun Shilling is the, her incumbent MP and she's saying that she's very pretty and that she's very clever. Mm, so that's why, even though you couldn't see her smiling behind the mask, but she definitely was. Again, you're tuning into the Straits Times Live and we are following PAP candidate for Pongo West SMC, Miss Sun Shilling. As she makes her rounds, this is the only weekend um, during the campaigning period for GE 2020. So, of course, all candidates, um, both PAP and opposition, are out in full force. In fact, we know that her opponent, Ms. Tan Chen Chen from the Workers' Party, may be out and about. Again, if you're tuning in right now, you're seeing a PAP candidate for Pongo West SMC, Ms. Sun Shui Ling. She is at the Food Fair Kopitiam at Block 273D, uh, Pongo Place, interacting with some of the residents. Pongo West SMC, of course, is one of the four new SMCs uh, carved out for this particular election. It has 26,579 voters. Let's try and get closer to hear what she's saying. Thank you. 
会教他们帮你打？不是我朋友。啊，你朋友？不是我朋好的。因为他们是八十五，另外一个这样。对，也没有关系，人只要吃这个，我们要主发展，这个。啊，你的朋友去哪里？我是住在这边。你叫他来找我。你叫他来找我。我不叫他来找我。啊，有问题叫他来。我不叫。等这个结束，这个因为要选举选嘛，现在还。So if you are tuning in right now, you are looking at PAP candidate for Pongo West SMC, Ms. Sun Shui Ling, um, doing her walkabout this Sunday morning. Of course, this is um, the one and only weekend during this campaign period for GE 2020. And Ms. Sun spoke to some members of the media earlier, um, and she was telling us that, you know, for the past few years, I mean, this is, she's been in term for one she's been an MP for one term and she was saying that you know uh, she's worked the ground hard for her residents um, and introduced some initiatives like job clinics to help her residents find jobs and some issues that she would love to continue addressing at the cost of living as well as childcare related issues Alright, so there you have it. Uh, we just wanted to bring you some live action on the campaign trail and what you just saw was Ms. Sun Shui Ling, PAP candidate for Pongo West SMC, uh, giving out this particular leaflet to her, uh, to some of the residents here at Pongo West. Um, and, you know, she has a, there's a personal message um, talking about COVID-19 with a quote, it takes rain and sunshine to make rainbows. The going may be tough, but with hope and hard work, a glorious rainbow awaits us. And of course, at the back, you know, certain um, certain figures about what has been done here at Pongo West, I guess. Um, so if you are Pongo West resident, yeah, that's what's happening today. Um, we understand that Workers' Party candidate, um, Ms. Tan Chen Chen, will also be making around, her rounds um, in the Pongo West area later today. So we're going to try and bring you live action of that as well. So stay tuned. Um, this is, of course, the Pongo West SMC, one of the new SMCs for this um, general election. Um, that's expected to be pretty hotly contested because, as you know, Pongo West is a new SMC that was carved out of Pasir Ris Pongo GRC. Uh, we'll bring you more action soon. Stay locked down to the Straits Times, all our socials, and our GE Live blog um, for all the necessary um, and up-to-date general election action. Till next time, I'm Sam Joe. Thank you.